We're taking a look at nuclear chemistry questions from the 2015 Regents exams. Okay, so we have information here and a data table. And the first question that relates to nuclear chemistry I have here is question one that says identify the decay mode of potassium 37. In order to do that, you're not supposed to memorize that. That should trigger you to look at the reference tables. And we're looking for potassium 37. And it happens to be here on the table. And you're writing in the decay mode. You can just write it in as this beta symbol positive. Okay, so it's a uh, positron, but it's beta positive decay. So just put the B with the plus sign. Okay, let's take a look at the next question. It says to complete the nuclear equation in your answer booklet for the decay of potassium 40 by writing the notation for the missing nuclide. All right, so I have it here. Let's just bring it down. And when you balance nuclear equations, you just have to make sure that your mass numbers, which are the top numbers, are equal on both sides, and the atomic numbers, which are the bottom numbers, are equal on both sides. Okay, so this is typical for Regents' question that they're going to give you beta minus decay. So let's take a look. 40 is equal to 0 plus what number? And of course, that's 40. And then 19 is equal to a minus 1 plus what number? Now, a lot of kids will write 18 because they forget about the minus sign. That's why on Regents uh, exams, most of the time you're going to see beta minus. And that's no exception for 2015. But what you have to realize, it's 20 plus a minus 1 or 20 minus 1 that's equal to 19. So now I have my mass number and my atomic number, but now I need the identity of the missing nuclide. So what do I do? I go to the periodic table and I go ahead and I look up element 20 as calcium. That's the atomic number. And there's my answer. Okay, let's take a look at question three. This will show up again and again as well. And this is a half-life question. It's asking you in question three to determine the fraction of the original sample of potassium-42 that remains unchanged after 24.72 hours. Now, I don't know how your teacher showed you to do this. I like to use a table. So I'm going to show you how I do it. You don't have to do it that way. Whatever's going to get you to the right answer is fine. First thing, let me erase all this. And then let me select this. Move this out of the way. All right, and let's go back. So we want to determine the fraction of potassium 42. So here's the thing. I write a table for mass and time. Now we're determining the fraction, which means that we're starting with the mass. We're starting with the whole thing. So I'm going to use a mass number of 1. The time to start is 0. And we want to know what the fraction is going to look like after a certain amount of time. And that time is 24.72 hours. But here's the thing. We need to know the half-life. It wasn't given to us. Otherwise, I can't finish the table. So what does that mean right away when you have to find something? You're going to go to the reference table. So we're going to go back to that same reference table. And now what are we doing? We're looking at potassium-42. And we need the half-life. And here it is. 12.36 hours, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. All right, so what do I do? With time, I'm adding time. So 12.36 hours goes by, and I have half of my original sample. Another 12.36 hours go by for a total of 24.72, and I'm going to have half of the half, which is a quarter. And there's my answer. So that's why I like to use the table, because you're filling it in. You have to remember that as you are going into the future, with every half-life that's hit, the mass is halved every time. But time, you're going to add. All right? 
sometimes kids think you're doubling because if you look at the first two half-lives, that's exactly what's happening, but you're not. If we were going to continue and go to an eighth, you would add another half-life, not double. So that's where kids will make a mistake, is if it goes beyond two half-lives. Just be careful and fill in the table. All right. Let's stop here. We'll come back and take a look at the next set of questions that relate to nuclear chemistry.